Interstate 74. Yeah. All right, Interstate 74 is a sometimes interesting road that goes through a lot of Illinois and some Indiana and Ohio and a tiny bit of Iowa. Let's take a look at the route. It begins in the Quad Cities of Illinois and Iowa, and it goes southeast to Cincinnati. It also works as kind of a big bypass around Chicago. You're watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel where we talk about interstate highways and the places that they're assigned to go to. If you like this kind of content, please give us a like. And if you really dig it, why not hit that subscribe button? All right, first we're gonna talk about eastbound I-74. Eastbound I-74 begins here with an intersection with I-80 in the Quad Cities area. It is signed for Bettendorf and Davenport. And we do get this helpful sign saying that Peoria traffic through traffic for I-74 should stay on 80 since 80 goes around town and also instead of doing two clover leafs you can do zero here is the old approach to the twin bridges the old i-74 bridges in the quad cities crossing the mississippi river in bentendorf iowa these bridges are going to go away and there is uh the road no longer crosses them this is just street view being weird. Speaking of street view being weird, here's the only picture I could get for crossing this bridge going eastbound or southbound across the bridge is uh, maybe the day that it opened and they just have pedestrians on the bridge. We get no welcome to Illinois sign because I couldn't find any sort of street view like I said so now here we are on the Illinois side and we are approaching 280. 280 is signed east for Chicago and Peoria, 280 west for Des Moines. Here is the cloverleaf ramp that mainline I-74 gets to follow, so that's always fun. And now here on the southeast side of the Quad Cities, we get 80 East Chicago, 80 West Des Moines, and 74 East Peoria. 74 is only a couple of miles away from hitting I-88, but we get no signage for I-88 on 74, and it will not be the last time that happens on this road. Here we are out on the road, we get Illinois 81-9, Galesburg is our secondary at 34, and then Peoria is the primary. It's a little weird. On Street View, I noticed that they had 74 marked as the Chicago-Kansas City Expressway, which it is Illinois 110 and Missouri 110, which is kind of a weird project. Part of it makes sense, part of it doesn't. But my point is, it actually exits here. It should be exiting at US 34, yet they don't bother to put the Illinois 110 sign up on this, so obviously it couldn't be that important. We meet 474 on the outskirts of Peoria. It is signed for Indianapolis and 74 for Peoria. Here's a look at downtown Peoria as we go through. 74 really goes right through the center of Peoria, so it makes it feel pretty big when 74 goes through it. And here is where we cross the Illinois River coming out of Peoria and going over to the other side. 474 was signed for Indianapolis, yet here on the main line on 74 after meeting 474, 74 is now signed for Bloomington instead of Indianapolis, which I really don't much care for. 155 is signed for Lincoln, which is really weird. 155 should be signed at least for Springfield, if not for St. Louis, because it's the shortcut to those cities from Peoria. Once we get a mileage sign, things make sense again. We get Bloomington 27 and Indianapolis on the bottom line where it belongs. We do get mention of I-39 coming up, 39 North Rockford, although I feel like it should be on the overhead sign just ahead. Because here, once again, 74 comes just a couple miles short of hitting I-39. Maybe one mile short. So here we get 55 South, 74 East, St. Louis, Indianapolis, and 55 North, Chicago. Again, I think the I-39 shield should be right next to I-55 on that overhead. In Bloomington, this is what the exits look like to get onto this road. 55 South, 74 East, Springfield, Decatur, and Champaign. <laughs> Oh, IDOT. Uh, should be Indianapolis, should definitely be St. Louis. Uh, IDOT, IDOT, IDOT. Here is our split, and so now we get 74 Indianapolis Decatur. Decatur because of US 51. And 55 South Forest, St. Louis, and Springfield. I'm fine with Springfield being on that sign. I've mentioned this before. It's fine as a secondary on an overhead in that case, as long as St. Louis or Chicago are being signed as well. On 51, we get 74 East Champaign and 7451 Peoria Rockford because 51 is going to Rockford. And here we come meeting I-57, 
I looked very carefully. We come like a mile or two from meeting I-72, and there were no signs for I-72 at all here. I realize I-72 goes in the opposite direction that you're going here, but still, it'd be nice to know. Coming out of the Bloomington area, now we get St. Joseph 5, Danville 28, and Indianapolis 114. Fine sign there. And 74 signed east for Indianapolis. That's cool to see. And that's in Danville. Welcome to Indiana. Something something Benjamin Harrison. On the Indiana side, no surprise that Indianapolis is the bottom line city. And it interchanges, Indianapolis is signed as well pretty much throughout Indiana. Indiana really doesn't mess around with these kinds of things. We are meeting 465, which will be I-74's path around Indianapolis. And as always, 465 has no control cities. Here we meet I-70 with 74 and 465 for Indianapolis and St. Louis. And now we meet I-65, signed for downtown and south for Louisville. And now on the other side of the loop, 74 East Cincinnati is going to exit, although it shares its exit with Southeastern Avenue. Once outside of Indy, Cincinnati is the bottom line, as well it should be. And we come into Ohio. Here we're getting some unusual three-digit interstate loop control city signage in Ohio. 275 South Kentucky and North 275 and 74 East Cincinnati. Well done. When 74 and 275 split, 74 is for Cincinnati and 275 is signed for Dayton. Awesome. A lot of construction around the 74 and 75 interchange and we see 75 North Dayton, 75 South Lexington. Here's what it looks like a few years ago. I wanted to see what it looks like without the construction. Still same deal, 75 Lexington, 75 North Dayton. I do think they should have 75 South Cincinnati. I know we're within the city limits, but we haven't actually made it downtown yet. And also, again, once again on I-74, we just barely miss another interstate. I, I feel like I-71 should also be mentioned here. It's about four miles down the road or so. All right, let's take a look at westbound. I-74. These are split off of I-75. We get 74 West Indianapolis. And once on it, no surprise, Indianapolis remains the control city. Indianapolis left two lanes. Hitting 275 again, so we get the same control cities as before. 275, 275, Dayton. And 74 West and 275 South, Indianapolis. Once again at the split, 74 is signed for Indianapolis and 275 is signed for Kentucky. Awesome. At interchanges in Ohio, Ohio is doing pretty well here. They are signing at Indianapolis straight up. Welcome to Indiana once again. In Indiana, no surprise, West 74, Indianapolis. On the mileage sign, Indianapolis is on the bottom line where you would expect. And here we meet 465 again, and once again we get no control cities, even 474. Very strange in 465, how they really uh, commit to this bit here. Whoa, a control city on 465, on a pull through, wow. Because of I-74, of course, 74 Peoria. We meet 70 once again, and it is signed for St. Louis and for downtown Indianapolis. Now we meet 74's egress of 465. I don't know why there's not a 465 pull through here. There really should be 465 North Chicago. Would make a lot of sense to me, I think. It would be a good dichotomy along with this Peoria. And now we're getting Indianapolis Peoria. So once again, Indiana stays true to what we've seen on the mainline road when we get to interchanges. Peoria also remains the bottom line city here. So we're skipping Champaign, but in theory, Ashto-wise or whatever, that's what they're supposed to do. Champaign shows up here at 54 and Peoria 143. Welcome to Illinois. We are back in Illinois. Illinois, not too surprisingly, goes West 74 Champaign at interchanges and 74 East Indianapolis. Signed Indianapolis because we are currently in Danville. However, once we're a little bit beyond that, we get 74 West Champaign, 74 East Danville. Oh, I dot. Shame, shame. That should be Indianapolis. Ah, that is provincial. Now we're getting Champaign Urbana 24 and Peoria 117. Now here's the way they should be doing it. We do get a nice 57 South Memphis West 72 Decatur right there on the overhead sign. I've said this the last couple of videos when I've talked about this exit in Champaign. And I think they finally do it right here on Westbound 74. Once we're beyond that, of course it is East Champaign, West Bloomington now. So they're ignoring Peoria at interchanges. 
interchanges. We're approaching the I-55 interchange in Bloomington, so we get St. Louis, Chicago. And because we have our concurrency, we get 5574 Chicago, Rockford, Peoria. So that's mentioning US 51 and the fact that we're going to be meeting I-39 to Rockford. <laughs> this is so hilariously bad. I think there's one or two interchanges where 55 and 74 meet surface streets. And we get 5574 Springfield, Decatur, Champaign. And then Joliet, Rockford. Joliet, come on. It's a suburb of Chicago. Why would you possibly have that there instead of Chicago? You should always sign Chicago, IDOT. Always. Anytime you can sign Chicago, you should. Ah! Springfield, Decatur, Champaign, not too much better, but at least sort of excusable. But Joliet, come on. Here on the main line, though, we get 55 North Chicago and 39 North Rockford, one mile at the exit 474. So we do know that 39 is coming up before we get onto I-74, so that's useful for Rockford and Wisconsin traffic. Not too far out of Bloomington, we get Carlock and Peoria, 155 South Lincoln, once again, coming the other way. Now at 474, we get Moline, Rock Island, and 74 West Peoria. So Moline, Rock Island, we're gonna sign the two Illinois side of the Quad Cities. I suppose that makes sense, but I don't know. You could also do Moline, Bettendorf, since those are the two that 74 actually goes to, or you could have Davenport, since it's the biggest one, but that's okay. Here's another look at downtown Peoria. And like I say, seems bigger than it is in these pictures. In fact, driving through downtown Peoria feels like a full-on, below-grade urban freeway. Feels like a much bigger city than it is. Like, maybe Peoria was expected to be much larger when they were building I-74. On the other side of Peoria, we get 474 East Indianapolis and 74 West Moline, Rock Island. But at interchanges, we get Peoria and Galesburg. Come on! Galesburg, Moline. So they do it on the other side as well. Instead of signing Peoria, they sign Galesburg. I not. Coming close to the Quad Cities, we get Interstate 89, Moline, Rock Island 22. I don't know how two cities could possibly be the same distance apart like that. And Des Moines 194, getting Des Moines on there because of I-80. Do we meet I-80 for the first time? So we get 74, 280, Moline, Rock Island, next right. So we get another cloverleaf or continuing on 74, Unless you really want to travel through town, I don't think many people would, but I actually always do because I like driving through those on 74. 280 and 80 in the Quad Cities are both extremely boring, so I enjoy taking 74 through town. Here is the exit off of 280, where 74 is signed West Moline. 280 for Rock Island, because it's going to have an exit for Rock Island coming up shortly. Here we come to the new bridge, and we are now on 74 Davenport, because we're going to be crossing the river soon. Here's a look at downtown Moline. And here's a look at the new bridge, which is still under construction and only open on one side, from what I can tell. And here's a look at the old bridge. It was a scary bridge to drive across. I've driven across it many times. Really nice looking bridges, though. It's a shame that they will be going away. They do look very nice. The people of Iowa welcome you. And eventually this won't be two-way traffic, so you won't have a head-on collision to read that sign. And we approach I-80, and we're getting 80 West Des Moines, 80 East Chicago. 80 West Des Moines, 80 Chicago, 74 ends. Or does it? I guess we'll find out next week. Or will we? Alright, let's take a look at Todd's the way it should be for I-74. I-74 eastbound, I agree with Peoria. I do think Champaign would actually be okay, it's a pretty big city for Illinois. And you're meeting I-57 and the, the University, then Indianapolis, then Cincinnati. Westbound, Indianapolis. And westbound, I would skip Champaign and go straight to Peoria just because it is the bigger city and Indianapolis traffic is probably less concerned with Champaign than Illinois traffic is, then Davenport, and then Des Moines. Although I'm fine with the Rock Island and Moly mentions in there. Thank you so much for watching Control City Freak. I really enjoyed this, and we will be back with one that I probably won't enjoy so much next week, maybe. All right, my name is Todd, and keep on trucking.